into the podium to give a speech entitled The Google, where Scott, two years ago, he and his wife decided not to get cable or satellite TV while in Monterey, living off Netflix and wireless internet, our second our speaker, first speaker of the day, giving a second speech from the Common Communicator Manual, Scott Wilbur. Well, Toastmasters, I, I sent an email to Angie a few days ago saying, absolutely, I want to do some every Saturday. I want to start down this company communicator path. But I had a really busy week. I had some, some career stuff happening. I had a take-home test. I had some labs. So all of a sudden, it's last night, and I'm trying to think, I need to give a speech in about 12 hours. So I did what I do with everything in my life. I went to Google. I typed... Uh, I searched for all different kinds of topics, I checked the news, I checked whatever, and all of a sudden I realized I should write, I should talk about the internet because I spent so much time on the internet. Like I mentioned, my wife and I decided not to get cable. We decided that it would, it would waste too much time, we'd sit there mindlessly watching TV, and we really don't need it right now, let's, let's enjoy things. What that has turned into, for the first year and a half here, I'd go into the library just about every night and you know a good chunk of Saturday or Sunday. But now that my curriculum is winding down a little bit, I spend all weekend on the internet. I search everything. So really what I thought about for this speech was why I love the internet so much and how I'm still kind of amazed at it. I, a few weeks ago I was with my father-in-law and he's not very savvy with the internet and I was kind of poking him around, showing him around and he was amazed by it, of all these great things that you could do. So I guess I'm still amazed by it and there's three real reasons that I'm amazed by the internet. First is that it makes the information open to everyone. I was an economics undergrad, so I, I think in these terms of supply and demand and what, and what things are available to people. Not only in terms of convenience items, like can I, can I buy a sweater from L.L. Bean online? When, when is my, the movie that I want to see? When is that showing? Also health and information, health information. What medicines will, might I have a bad interaction with? What should my doctor be telling me that because he's a bad doctor, he hasn't? <laughs> Insurance and real estate information. I'm not sure who's read the book Freakonomics, but there's a pretty interesting section in the book about how insurance rates for this very specialized type of insurance went down after the internet really kind of came of age because we, as, as humans, we take out insurance on things that we believe are risky. So we don't really know whether or not we have a risk of, of something happening. Once the internet came about, we and we we start to get more of a ground truth of whether or not this horrible event could happen to us. We have a better idea of how likely that is, and people change how much insurance they took out accordingly with this one specific example. And I guess the last piece about this make information available to everyone is that information, I know everyone says information is power, but it really is. I mean, no longer is a, a set of information exclusive to a, a privileged group of people. You know, Friedman's book, The World is Flat, if, if you want information, you can get to, to, a, to a much greater degree nowadays with the internet. Second reason that I love the internet is that it brings people together. I'm sure that everyone has heard of, of MySpace. Now, I wanted to get a MySpace page for at least a year. My wife would not let me. Her impression of MySpace is the 18 to 21 year old crowd because she, she's one of five siblings and her younger siblings are on MySpace. So when I told her I wanted to get a MySpace page, she said, absolutely not. That's for college kids. They just chat back and forth. You're a 28-year-old man, and you're married, and you're not getting a MySpace page. But two months ago, I did it. And she said, I don't care if you have that page. You're not putting a picture of me on there. So I put a, a nice self-portrait of the two of us on there. But really, MySpace, I mean, talk about networking. Talk about, I mean, I've, I've gotten in touch with friends from high school, from college, from previous ships, and... You know, random folks that you never thought you'd get in touch with again, and now, because of the internet and because I'm linked into MySpace, I have that connection. There's another page called My Family. Uh, it's basically MySpace for a family. My, the Wilbur side of my family, and then I set one up for my wife's family. Everyone gets their login, they post pictures, they post news, they post recipes, you do a poll. We just put a poll before we found out the gender of our baby, what everyone thought the gender would be. And they were all wrong, and it's a boy. Everyone voted a girl. <laughs> So it can bring families together. I think it's the last way that it brings people together, for me, is professionally. Uh, 
I'm a surface warfare officer, and there, there are two websites in the Navy for surface warfare officers. One is the official one that the Navy paid for. You can ask career advice, Navy news, that kind of official stuff. And then there's kind of the, the, the kid brother to that, the unofficial underground one, where you can really get a lot of good career gouge. About a week ago, I is that actually it was right after the Toastmasters meeting, I found out that I'm going to see about nine months sooner than I expected. So I need to pick what ship I'm going to. So I'm immediately thinking I need to call my mentors. I need to talk to the senior SWOs around NPS. But in reality, I got on the internet and I went on this one website and I got people from all around the Navy giving me specific career advice. The third thing about the internet, that although I'm amazed, it's very dangerous. It really uh, it changes the dynamic of how information and how we communicate. You know, although my wife and I don't have cable, we do get Channel 8, the KSBW channel, and we, we watch, besides watching Carl on the weekends with weather, we watch Dateline with the, uh, to catch a predator. And I don't watch it all that often, but you can be very surprised with how people will use the internet for, for such bad devices. Another one that maybe you've been involved in is some of the internet scams. I remember about three years ago, I got an email from a guy in Nigeria <laughs> that told me that my uncle died, not even my uncle, but he had the same last name and I was going to make $15 million. Yeah. Yeah. This was before this was published, so I'm sitting here on my computer thinking, I'm going to be rich. This is incredible. So before I do anything, let me just maybe come back and read this later. Luckily, I came to my senses and realized that it was a scam, but that's the kind of danger in the internet. I guess the last danger is information without interpretation. I mean, I can learn all about the, the potential dangers of my future baby on the internet, but if I don't have someone to interpret that information, then it's really just facts without any kind of context. So that's why I'm amazed with the internet. It connects you, it gives you information, but even though it does all those things, it does have some risks. So when, when we're online, we're, we're in this brave new globalized world, we kind of need to keep in mind uh, it can't be 100% good. Mr. Smith.